Welcome back to the introduction to Kismet. In this video, we have one last thing left to do to our sequence to finish it up. And that is to make it so that a user can't sit there and keep hitting the trigger while the sequence is taking place, and thereby keep messing up the countdown. So what we're going to do is pop into our sequence and have a quick look at what we've got so far. And it looks kind of long, but really this is not that bad. No, it's not. So this is a really simple sequence. What we need to do, though, is set up something that takes place real early on, which checks to see if the sequence is running. And if it's running, if we're in the middle of it, don't let the user do anything else. And that's real easy to set up. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to come over here, and let's go ahead and break the connection from our uh, trigger, because we're going to insert some stuff in here. We're going to begin with a simple condition, in this case, a comparison for a Boolean operation. True or false, is the sequence running? And it's so important, the, that particular question, that I'm going to type it into the object comment. Is the sequence running? And then question mark. And then just to, to clarify a little more, if so, do nothing. Okay. There you go. So you're spelling it out for whoever comes in behind you. So let's plug our trigger right into that. Now we need some sort of a variable in place to uh, act as the container to hold the status as to whether or not the sequence is running. So let's go ahead and do a new variable, and I'll even put an object comment on this variable. We'll call this sequence status. There we go. Now, currently, the first time you run through right now, nothing has been pushed. Is the sequence running? False. No, it is not. So... If so, do nothing. Well, if it is not running, we need to start the sequence. Now, you could just plug this in right here, but that's not going to fix anything. The next thing we need to do, the very next thing we do, is to set the value of our sequence status variable to true. And you'll see why here in just a second. But let's go ahead and right-click, new action, and we'll go down to set variable, bool, and I need to make a little bit more room. And we'll plug false in. This will be our target. And we'll just hard code our value to true, which is just checking the box. And then from there, we can continue on with the rest of our sequence. I'm even going to give this an object comment, and we'll say uh, start sequence, lock out the player. Now, how did we just lock out the player? Because suddenly the player can't do anything anymore. Why? Not the, with the sequence anyways. Not yeah, with the trigger. Not with the trigger. They're, yeah. they're, they're kind of helpless as far as the trigger is concerned. Because now, as soon as this is triggered, it's setting this value to true. If it's true, there's nothing connected to this. That's right. So they just get a dead signal. Let's prove it. Pop in, play from here. Boom. You have, you have activated the time light switch. I'm going to hit E. And you hear that on the keyboard, and I'm not getting anything. But right now we have a problem. And that is that as soon as the sequence restarts here in just a moment, three, two, one, boom, let's start it over. Oh, gee, you can't. We get nothing. It's the same as if the max trigger count had been set to one. We can't do anything with this. What we need to do now is come to the end of our sequence and have some sort of a, a sequence object that will reset this variable back over to false. So what I'll do is come all the way back here to the end, right here where, we're, where we are initializing our counter. And at the same time that we initialize our counter, I'm going to have a separate action, which again will be a set variable, bool. And I'm going to connect this out of the log. Now, why out of the log? Why wouldn't I connect it here? Because this would actually be, uh, well, I guess you really could. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. But it's just kind of a personal preference. I like breaking it out. And let's go ahead and connect this over all the way back here. So it's mm -hmm. kind of far away. And just to make things clear, watch this. We're going to right-click, set activate delay, and give this a five-second delay. Just to put us in the clear. That's right. So during the countdown, we still can't get any option, uh, any inputs from the user. As soon as that countdown is over, that's going to set this back over to false, and suddenly the user can play again. Now with that, we are essentially done with our effect. Let's give it a test. So we'll pop in. So you've activated the time light switch. I hit E, I get nothing. So we'll wait a moment for everything to cycle all the way through. And hit E again. Still hitting, nothing. Still nothing. Three, two, one. Lights come on. And if I want, I can start the whole thing over again. Very nice. Excellent. Now, there's only one more thing I want to show, and this is almost like a bonus. So forgive me. It's just something I want to squeeze in because the video turned out to be a little bit shorter than I wanted it to be. What if you don't like these seven-mile wires that connect your variables together? There's one 
kind of advanced feature that you can use inside of Kismet to prevent you from needing these. But do understand, sometimes those long wires can be a little useful. It all depends on how you look at it. What I'm going to do is come over here to my variable, and notice we have our object comment set to sequence status. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to hit control X to remove it. We have var name. We can give this variable a name, and we'll call this sequence status, no spaces, like so. And you'll notice we get a red name that appears on the bottom. Now let's pop over here to this guy, and I'm going to disconnect our target. What I'm going to do is right-click here underneath it, new variable, and we're going to create a named variable. A named variable has no data type. A named variable is just a reference that calls another variable based on its name. So we can come back over to this guy, and for its find var name property, we can set this to sequence status, the exact same name. There we go. And if we, uh, say if we close Kismet and reopen it, I mean, if we wire it back in, this will change to a, uh, a check mark. But sometimes it doesn't update properly when you want it to. So let's go ahead and give this a quick shot and see if it fires off. All right, so right now we should be locked out. Boom. And it's going to cycle back around. Five. Four. The anticipation's killing me. Three. <laughs> two. One. Boom. So are we still locked out? No, we are not. So there we go. So good. That variable, kind of, it's almost like a radio signal. What happens? I'm going to go ahead and jump out. There you go. I, I knew it was going to update sooner or later. So as soon as it detects that it has somebody to talk to, you get a green checkbox right there. So now it is calling this variable by name, alleviating the need for those long wires. You could use that in all of these areas where you have all of these uh, variables connected to one another. In fact, if you really wanted to, you could have a variable floating out here in space. I know sometimes when I'm creating uh, big, long kismet sequences, I'll have a commented box with all of the variables I'm going to need, and I'll call the rest of them through named variables. It's just something I wanted to bring up you know some food for thought so with that that is going to wrap up our introduction to kismet i'd like to thank you for following along and we'll catch you guys on the next video